Welcome back to Poe Mister Channel. Let's assume a split-phase power system with two 10 kilowatt inverters, where the capacity limit of the L1 phase is 10 kilowatt, the capacity limit of the L2 phase is 10 kilowatt, and the L1 L2 end line has a capacity limit of 20 kilowatt. If a 6 kilowatt 120 volt single-phase load is connected to the L1 end line. How much power can we still connect to the L1 L2 end line as a 240 volt split phase load? Can we simply subtract the 6 kilowatt load from the 20 kilowatt limit of the L1 L2 end line? The answer is of course no. In this video, we will focus on the Poisson Smart 10 kV power system and explain in detail two important aspects that are often overlooked in inverter power systems. First, the distribution of L power across phases, and second, the difference in power distribution between split phase power systems and two phase power systems. First, in a power system, the positive and negative terminals of each inverter's battery ports are connected to the positive and negative terminals of the same battery. The photovoltaic input ports are connected to independent photovoltaic arrays. And it is important not to connect the same photovoltaic array to multiple inverters. To keep the explanation of the AC wiring in the power system simple and clear, we will omit the battery and photovoltaic connections. The phase power distribution issue mainly arises in split phase and two phase power systems. However, we can understand the basic principle from the single phase power system. The L N line output power limit is equal to the rated output power of a single inverter multiplied by the number of inverter connected in parallel. For split phase and two phase power systems, the situation is more complex, which is the focus of today's discussion. Let's first talk about the split phase power system. Suppose two inverters are connected in a split phase configuration. Where the AC input and output ports L1 and L2 are connected to the L1 and L2 lights of the grid and the load lights, with a 180 degree phase angle between L1 and L2 ports. In this case, setting 60A and 31 must be configured accordingly. Set item 60A to 180 degrees and item 31 to PAL. Regarding setting item 68, in simple terms, when the inverter's AC ports are in parallel, set it to zero degrees. When they are not in parallel, set it to 180 degrees. In this configuration, the L1 and L2 output power limit is equal to the total power of each inverter divided by the number of phases. Since L1 and L2 share the total power equally, this is then multiplied by the number of power inverters, resulting in a 10 kilowatt limit. Similarly, the L2 end limit is also 10 kilowatt. The L1 L2 output power limit is 20 kilowatt. Assuming that setting item 38 configures the output voltage to 120 volt. Both the L1 end and L2 end single phase outputs will be 120 volt, while the split phase L1 L2 output will be 240 volt. Now suppose a 6 kilowatt load is connected to the L1 end line. What is the maximum large load capacity for the L1 L2 end line? Should we simply subtract the 6 kilowatt load from the L1 L2 end line power limit? Absolutely not. Because in the split phase system, the load power on L1 and L2 is limited by the voltage and current capabilities between each phase line and neutral. For example, if the L1 end line is already carrying a 6 kilowatt load, the remaining capacity of L1 is only 4 kilowatt. The available power for the L1 L2 end line depends not only on L2's capacity but also on L1's remaining capacity. In this case, although the remaining capacity of the L2 is still 10 kilowatt, the maximum supported power of the L1 L2 end line is actually determined by the remaining capacity of the phase with the smallest remaining capacity. 
Since L1 only has four kilowatts left, the maximum power for L1 outer end line is four kilowatts multiplied by two, equaling eight kilowatt. Simply subtracting the six kilowatt load from the total power limit is incorrect, because this overlooks the partial consumption of the power on L1. Therefore, in the split phase system, the available power of the L1 L2 L line is determined by the minimum of the remaining capacities of L1 and L2, not by simply subtracting the single phase load from the total power limit. In practical applications, if the L1 N line is already connected to a 5 kilowatt load, we cannot just add a 50 kilowatt. 240 volt split phase load to the L1 L2 N line. Instead, we need to configure the system maximum load based on the remaining capacity of each phase line. Specifically, the L1 L2 N line can only accept up to 10 kilowatts of 240 volt split phase load. Why the L2 N line can still accept 5 kilowatts of 120 volt load? This ensures that load capacity of each line is not exceeded. Next, let's look at another system example to explain power distribution in a two-phase power system. In a two-phase power system with two inverters, the L1 and the L2 AC ports are connected in parallel, so setting item 60A must be set to zero. The first inverters AC input and output ports are connected to the L1 phase of the grid and low lights, and the second inverters AC input and output ports are connected to the L2 phase of the grid and low lights. If we assume that setting item 38 configures the output voltage to 120 volts, the L1 N and L2 M outputs will both be 120 volts. To set the phase angle between the L1 and L2 lights to 180 degrees, ensuring a 240 volt output on the L1 L2 end line, setting item 31 should be configured as follows: set inverter on the L1 line to 2P0 and inverter on L2 line to 2P2. Similar to the power distribution principle in the split phase power system, if an 8 kilowatt load is connected to the L1 N line, the maximum output power of the L1 L2 N line will be determined by the remaining capacity of the phase with the smallest remaining capacity. The primary difference between a split phase power system and a two phase power system lies in how the power is distributed. When both 120 volt single phase loads and 240 volt split phase loads are connected in a split phase power system, the total power of all power inverters is evenly distributed across two phases, requiring balanced loads on both phases. In contrast, a two phase power system allows for flexible adjustment of the number of inverters connected to each phase. Enabling different power configurations for each phase to better meet varying power demands. For example, a split phase power system composed of three inverters is ideal for scenarios where two 5 kilowatt 120 volt single phase loads and one 20 kilowatt 240 volt split phase load are connected. In this case, the two 120 volt single phase loads are evenly balanced across the two phases, while the remaining capacity from both phases is used to supply the 20 kilowatt split phase load. In a two phase power system with three inverters, where two inverters are connected to the L1 phase and one to the L2 phase. The L1 phase can support up to 20 kilowatt, and the L2 phase can support up to 10 kilowatt. This configuration allows for the simultaneous connection of a 20 kilowatt 240 volt split phase load and a 10 kilowatt 120 volt single phase load, without the need to balance the single phase outputs. The power distribution ratio for each phase can be further adjusted according to the specific needs. For instance, L1 can be connected to one inverter, and L2 can be connected to four inverters. 
to deliver 30 kilowatts for the single phase load and 20 kilowatts for the split phase load. Or L1 is connected to one inverter and L2 is connected to five inverters. It will provide 40 kilowatts for single phase load and 20 kilowatts for the split phase load. This concludes our explanation of the power distribution logic in Poson Smart 10 kV power system. We hope this video helps you configure your power system more effectively. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.